Well, there comes a time when there's always a change in transition in leadership. Scriptures uh, are full of that. Moses to Joshua. Elijah to Elisha. King David to Solomon. Jesus to his own disciples. Paul to Timothy. And uh, that's not different here at Trinity Church. Last Tuesday, the elders voted and confirmed Mike as the new elder board chairman. And so we are very pleased and we want to have just a little commissioning service here for him. Uh, and I have three charges to make. One to the staff and elder, myself, and also to uh, you, the congregation, and first of all, to Mike. Mike, personally, David said in uh, Chronicle, First Chronicles 28.9 to Solomon, he pulled him aside privately and said, if you want your way to be crowned with success, do this. Know the God of your father and serve him with a whole heart and a willing mind. For the Lord God searches the hearts and understands every plan and thought. And then he did a very gracious thing. And he exposed him before the entire congregation and basically said, no pressure. But he said this, be strong and courageous and do it, meaning complete the task of building the temple. Do not be dismayed for the Lord your God is with you. He will not leave you or forsake you. And I just want to encourage you, cling to those. Uh, I have been comforted many times by those words. That's why I share them with you. Now to uh, you staff members and elders here and uh, pastoral staff, I'll say, as well as the, all of the staff, um, will you commit to praying for Mike and for Paula because this is going to be a shared ministry, and she'll bear a lot of that as well. Would you continue to pray for him? Thank you. Congregation, as I've shared and challenged the pastoral staff as well as all the other staff, uh, I lay that charge before you. Will you commit to faithfully praying for Mike and Paula? Uh, taking up this mantle of leadership, there's a lot of responsibility with it, and sometimes it gets to be very lonely. Uh, so he would and his family would greatly appreciate your prayers. If so, signify by saying, we will. Thank you. Let's pray. Father, we thank you for your choice of leadership. We thank you that you are the head, you are the chief shepherd, and we thank you for choosing Mike. And we pray, Father, that you would minister to him. We pray that he would remain strong in his walk with you. We pray that you would give him discernment on decisions that need to be made and how to lead. We also pray, Father, that you will give him rich times with you. Pray that your protection over him physically that the stress of the job would not um, affect his cancer in any way. So thank you, Father, uh, for him. And we are excited and look forward, Lord, to the prospect of his leadership and how you're going to bless and move our church forward in Christ's name. Amen. It is with humility and much trepidation that I accept the role as chair of the Board of Elders. I'm fully aware of my inadequacies and my limits of time with my work week for me is about 50 to 60 hours. We as elders, staff, and congregation know that this is a very critical time for us as our church. But I have the confidence that our Lord, who is the head of the church, is greater and mightier than all of our problems and issues, and is going to make a way through. I cannot thank you enough for those of you who have participated uh, this month in our Thursday evening prayer times. As I mentioned a couple of weeks ago, we are working directly with the EFCA West District who are helping the elders understand our many failures of leadership and charting a way forward. Therefore, over this next month, we've asked Mark Wold as a specialist to come in, and Mark is going to be, who has literally spent a lifetime helping churches who are struggling to get to a place of health and vital ministry, most recently spending a whole year with E.V. Free Fullerton. Currently, he is full-time with Reach Global and is actually using these gifts for churches around the world. Mark has graciously given us three weeks starting September 2nd. He will be sharing from the Word over these next three Sundays, but more importantly, he desires to hear from everyone and anyone who wants to share their thoughts, concerns, and suggestions about what's been happening here at Trinity Church over this last while. 
because we anticipate that this is going to be more than Mark alone can handle, two of his colleagues are volunteering their time as well so that we can be sure that every one of you is heard. We will be setting up opportunities for all of you who desire for an interview time. Please come and share with these men. Also, we as elders want to hear from you, the congregation, directly. So in two weeks, on Sunday the 14th, we're going to have a congregational forum at 6 p.m. here. Mark will lead us as you openly share your thoughts, your concerns, and suggestions with us. We plan to hear generously. The staff has asked us to slow down the process as we look for an interim senior pastor. The Lord seems to be directing us to build some intermediary bridges before that individual comes. We covet your continual prayers for us, the pastors, staff, and Trinity Church. I've been asked to give an update on my health. As most of you know, a year ago I was diagnosed with ocular melanoma. I'm happy to report that I'm fully able to be a surgeon at Kaiser, and at this time there's no evidence of the spread of the cancer. But we will continue to... We will continue to monitor every three months for the scan, and Paul and I just want to personally deeply thank you for all the support that so many of you have given us through this journey. Let's worship together. 